going to discover how to use a simple walking stick for self-defense. Using a stick like this, this is the Joe Martial Arts Staff. It's also the same length as most hiking poles or a walking stick. This is something that the Japanese police department used a long time ago when they had police officers and they didn't want to use lethal damage. They wanted to be able to stop somebody. They used something like this. So this has the advantage, this 54 inch pole has an advantage over a bladed weapon giving you reach. So that's one of the, the easiest, most simple ways to understand the value of using the pole is that if he has something that you don't want him to hit you with, you can stop him with this. So there are many ways that you're gonna use this in the simplest of, uh, way that you're gonna use it is just to stick it right into his face for self-defense. So if you're walking down the street, it's in your hand, the threat comes in, you can strike with this hard piece of hickory. This is one made out of hickory. There's a link below if you wanna see how these are made. It's the first link. But you just smash it through his nose, his eyes, his teeth, into his throat for self-defense. It's a very simple technique. So this is the first way that you employ it in self-defense, simply by pushing. You can also push and turn your wrist over so that you're smacking him up across the side of his head for self-defense. Hello, Alita, good to see you. T, T, I haven't seen you in a while. Diego, nice to see you here. So pushing and turning allows you to come in very quickly with a distracting and devastating self-defense strike. Of course, turning your hips is gonna increase the speed and the power. Hello, Patrick. Now from this position, you can also lift it up to get it into your front hand by almost thinking about just like answering your phone. Cold War Prepper, good to see you. Cold War Prepper's in Central Texas. Bring it here, or Central Texas. Bring it here and thrust. So if that's his face, he's coming at you, your other hand is up, you give him a verbal command, back up, you're too close, I will defend myself. And then you're here, and now you've got a big piece of hickory between you and him. You can simply thrust it in, pull it back, and bring it down hard, right through the middle of the skull, which will stop most people from coming after. Hopefully you'll turn off his operating system, knocking him out and putting him on the floor. So from here, it's as simple as answer your phone, you can thrust, pull, and then bring it down on top. You can also be carrying your simple walking stick like this and turn your palm up. Now you can strike here, here, or you can bring it up into his, between his legs, snatching him up this way. Maybe he's coming out. Hello, Matthew, it's good to see you. He's coming out with something, smashing this way. You bring it this way. You can also bring it around and sweep his leg out, going in either direction. So from this position, Carrying it here, you turn it up, it's in your palm, strike, you can bring it down like you did before, you can slide, striking this way, you can go at the angle, you can go and take out the knee. Now I do want to show you some ways to get started with it. The first is a simple warm up. Now you're not going to warm up before you defend yourself, which is obvious to 99% of the people I would think. However, I do want to tell you that in case it occurs to you that warming up is not gonna be practical in a self-defense situation? The answer is yes, you're a genius, you figured it out. So uh, why would you warm up? You would warm up when you practice, because if you don't practice, you're not gonna be able to do it anyway. So warm up during practice, practice as much as you can, you'll get better at it, your confidence will grow, you'll be able to defend yourself. Now if you like learning how to defend yourself with a stick, a simple walking stick, or any other kind of stick, please, like, consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, and then I'll do a lot of these. You'll get notified, we can train together. This position, you're just going side to side, and the purpose here is to start to build power in your grip. You want powerful forearms by turning it out and then bringing it to an abrupt stop and pushing it back the other way. You're gonna activate those muscle fibers, you're gonna put tension on them, and you're gonna grow a lot faster, a lot stronger. Now the next way I want you to spin this thing is by holding it toward the top and the way that I figure that out is if my elbows bent 90 degrees I would hold this right here. Steven asks what's the length of this stick? This is the Japanese Joe. Traditionally they're 54 inches. This one's 54 inches. Another way to measure it is that it should come to right about where your armpit stops or starts right there. So from this position or another way to think about it is if your elbow is bent as if you were walking like a trekking pole or hiking pole or walking stick, your elbow being bent here, 
puts it in a natural position. And again, that's so you can thrust here, or you can bring this up, snatch it up between his legs, stick in his face, bring it there. So holding it in this position, so there's a little bit coming out the top where your thumb is, and a whole lot coming out the bottom where your pinky is, you're going to push your hand and turn it over and go side to side. Now you're gonna make this figure eight motion and there are two reasons to do this spin. Most spins, I will never tell you to spin a staff, right? We're not gonna get into fancy spins or a lot of cool things that you can do that are all for show, but that's none of that is self-defense. So I wouldn't tell you to spin for self-defense. However, if you have this type, this length of a walking stick, you can very effectively strike someone with half of that spin. You can strike them this side. You can also bring it back and strike them on the other half of that spin. So the way to practice that is to turn your wrist over. The other reason I have you spin is because it builds power in your grip. It improves your timing and distance. It'll put a callus on your hand and it'll get your heart rate up and lean you out faster. If you need any more reasons than that, it's, I find it fun, fun and challenging. So you're just going side to side. You're simply carving a sideways figure eight, also known as the infinity sign. This is called an endless spin or an infinity spin for that reason. That reason, the fact that it doesn't stop. You're going side to side. You're just making a circle here, and then you're making a circle here. And the staff goes from one side to the other side, getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, Alito says, um, this is good for practice, looks great for practice. It is, and it's gonna build power. Now, the way you change grips on this type of weapon is you just bring it over here. Yeah, Garrett says he's done it with a trick lightsaber. It's a little bit longer than a lightsaber or a dueling saber, but it's the same basic idea. I'm gonna learn the Obi-Ani spin, Ani, whatever that is. Oh, Anakin, yeah. Then this is part of it. It's basically a high and a low spin. So you're just going side to side. If you do want to get fancy, you can change your grip. Now it looks like a lightsaber, so that your thumb is like this. Yeah, Garen says, don't twirl it like a cheerleader's baton. I think that's what you said, Garen. But it's the same idea. It's not, you're not twirling like a baton. You're practicing these strikes over and over, building power in your grip. And the way that you change that grip is you bring it to here so your finger open opens the last three fingers. Yeah, Matthew says the screaming sticks also work that way. Last three fingers pop back here. I had a lot of technical difficulties this week. Matthew and I worked out last week with another student on the Zoom. We're gonna have one coming up this week, uh, but this previous week, my whole system just kind of bit the dust. So we went out to Best Buy and I got a new system. So we'll have our Zoom classes if you're interested in those. We're working on Kane right now. Send me an email. The finger pops behind, and then finger comes over here. So this is just a way to change the grip without taking your hand off your staff. And you, you wouldn't do this while you were defending yourself, but you do it during uh, practice. Hello, Tony, good to see you. You do it during practice so that you can build power not just in your grip, but in your hands, and get really familiar with how your staff moves through space and time. And again, these are strikes. Later, this becomes defending yourself, striking someone. And again, the greatest thing about using a simple walking stick to defend yourself is that you have this reach advantage. This stick is gonna be longer than a knife he might have, or a machete, or he might have a hatchet, and you can carry this with you. It's the perfect gray man option because it's simply a walking stick or hiking pole, a trekking pole. In this position, you snatch it up between his legs. You can then bring it down over the top, pushing your hand this way. You can bring it here. Hello, G. Carlton. You smash him across the side of his head. Like I said before, if you can knock him out, that's great. But you can put those in combination under and then over or under and to the side, or you can swing it here putting it in the other hand, you can stick it in his stomach. A low strike's always really good. From this position, lifting your back hand up, striking down on top. Now, I did want to talk about lifting that hand up so that you can see that from this position, you can intercept 
a strike from here and then stepping to the side, bring it over and strike them on the side of the head. So the strike's coming in here. I simply lift, putting it over my head. If his hand is coming in here, that's going to lift his hand, exposing his ribs. Then take a step with your back foot and then your front foot. Never cross your feet in self-defense. So you bring it here, one, two, you're off the angle, he's going this way, and then you can bring it down and smash him right here or right here. So from this position, one, two, and strike. Simply coming up to the side and strike. You can also bring it up and then you can change your hand position and strike on the other side. If you're here, you're striking on the right side. If you change your hand position, you're striking on the left side. And that brings me to that hand change. I want you to practice sliding one hand past the other hand, just coming from here to here. And if you want to get real fancy, you go all the way to the end. Hello, Bill, top of the morning to you. Coming all the way out. And then I've done this in a little while, which is why you should practice every day. If you want to get really good, eventually your hands will know exactly where to go. And then you can practice it striking. I just felt that in my shoulder. We had a little event, um, it was Wednesday night, no, Thursday night, and they had some physical challenges. They had a little push-up area, see how many push-ups you can do. And I made the mistake. I only did 70, and, but I did, them, I did them really fast. I did right, the right ones, like the good push-ups, right? They so did my 70 push-ups, and then someone came out and did like 78 or something. So then I dropped down, I did another 85, I think. And then somebody came by, and they weren't doing great push-ups. It, was, it wasn't like a military thing, so. But I, it's important to me to do them correctly, right? All the way down, all the way up. Uh, and then a bunch of pull-ups. Anyway, so I'm feeling it today, which is another reason why I chose to use this staff because I know it's gonna work all that stuff out. One of the best things for shoulders I've found is working with martial arts staffs, all different lengths. This is the Joe. So I'm just striking, you're just striking to the angle and what you're doing with your hands are one hand is gonna be on the bottom, the other hand is gonna be on the top. When you're doing the strike, this hand that's in the front of your body is on the top of the stick and the back hand, the palm is facing up. Yeah, so the sun says has 52 inch um, by two inch PVC pipe with caps on the end. That's a good one. You fill that with some water, some sand, that'll make it really heavy or just use it as it is. You can practice all these techniques. That'll really build your grip. You can bring this down over top of the head. You can bring it to the side, striking the knee or the thigh, taking his leg out from under him. If you step with it, you're going to have a lot more power. In all the different strikes, you can just bring it horizontally from one side to the other side, and you're going to get a great workout. It's going to be good for your arms and your shoulders. From this position, I wanted to show you that when you do bring your strikes down, you stop while there's distance between your hands. If you bring your hands together, you create a pivot point like a baseball bat, and then it will go farther than you want it to. If you bring it down here, you want to keep, you want to smack them in the head with it for self-defense, but then you want to keep that hard piece of hickory between you and the threat. You want to leave it there between you and him so that he has to get around it to get to your body. If you bring your hands together and you miss him or you hit him and it bounces off, now your stick is on the ground. He can step on it, knocking it right out of your hands or step beside it and you're not going to be able to get back up in time. So when you strike, make sure you always leave your hands. You leave some width between your hands and that acts as a natural break. The bottom hand is pulling and the top hand is directing which way you want your strikes to go. So from here, practicing over the head, you can even do it in different directions. You can do it turning from one side to the other side, to the front, to the back. 
changing the technique. This is one of my favorite strikes, which is grabbing with the palm down. And this hand's here, yeah, eight cuts and one thrust. Amen. That's a very traditional way to practice with your Joe and your Boken. There's a lot of similarity with the Japanese sword. Turning your wrist this way locks it. Turning your wrist on the front hand over. We'll do the same thing. See how your elbow's locked here? Allowing you, if you don't do that and they're moving in, you're just gonna be pushed, you're gonna hit and then your hands will come back. If you lock it, then they have to move your whole body back. And again, your goal is to thrust through the middle of them in this position, either through their eyes or their nose or their throat, into their solar plexus, into the groin. And then from here, make them get around that long piece of hickory or oak or whatever yours is made out of to stop them in their tracks. And again, from this position, you can pull, almost like a pull cue, increasing the speed and the accuracy of your strike and locking at the end. Be better if I'm looking at it, but you're bringing it here, and then you can bring it back here, change this hand over, and then you have that set, uh, other kind of strike. Cut The cutting th strikes, yeah. So bring it, if I don't lose it. Bringing it here and bringing it here from side to side. Now, practicing with it every day is going to give you that familiarization with your hands, that proprioception, your, your brain and your side, your hands is going to understand where they're supposed to go. This one, you can see, has these cuts in it. Yeah, Mike says that's also a switch for the front and back attack. Correct. So um, this uh, striking... Behind you, you can stick it. The guy's behind you, stick it in his stomach, stick it in his groin. You can stick it in the leg. You can hit this guy here. And then as you're changing, changing positions, orientation, you're facing this direction, and then you're facing this direction and changing your hands. But all of that is gonna come from this starting point and getting familiar with bring your hand under, over, turn, bring it back out, bring it out. This is how you start very slowly, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And then after you do this for a while, it'll start to become more natural. You'll start to find your center point better. And ultimately you wanna be able to do all these transitions, which I cannot do right now because I haven't been practicing enough, but you want them to be able to do these things with your eyes closed without thinking about it. You want this uh, simple walk, walking stick or simple self-defense staff to become part of your body an extra piece so that you can hit them. You, um, I want you to practice your thrusting strikes with those two hands, and then I want you to practice this block. So from here, and then you're gonna bring it up. You're simply thrusting. Yeah, Elita asked, is this the hickory one inch? Yes. Uh, T said, been wanting to stop by. T, I don't remember if you've been to the new location. I think so. Mike, um, yeah, don't forget to exhale when you can hear I'm a little winded. Uh, that has more to do with the fact that I'm super tired at the end of a long week. But yeah, always exhale. <sighs> when you exhale hard, <sighs> that's why we <clears throat> yell and when we strike in martial arts. But that <sighs> exhale does two things. One, well, three, really, it prepares you in the mind. There's a mental trigger, gets you to ready to fight. <sighs> two, it forces the air out, <sighs> which then forces you to breathe in. So you keep the blood in the oxygenated and the oxygen gets in the muscles. They exercise or they work faster, they contract harder, you hit harder. And three, when you do that, it squeezes everything, which allows you to hit a lot harder. It's almost like a whipping motion when your diaphragm and your intercostal muscles, they all constrict all at once and then wham, you hit them so much harder. So from here, hitting hard, exhale, inhale on the block. So I want you to and then sidestep and you're switching your feet. So what you're doing here, push, lift, step right, bring the left foot behind the right, bring the right hand back, the left hand to the front and knock them out for self-defense, striking on the side of the body. So from here, your exhale, Inhale, see I took a little step back, step, switch, strike. 
Now you're on the other foot, your right foot's forward. Take advantage of that by pra for practicing the other side. So exhale thrust. Notice that you have front arm locked, backhand twisting from here. Inhale. This time when I went back, I came back into the side, moving off of the center line, allowing him to go by and miss me completely, putting myself in the advantage of being able to see him squarely, and he can't see me except out of the corner of the one eye, because his body is right here, and then I'm going to switch, switch, step with that strike, stepping in with your left foot, and just like you're chopping down a tree for self-defense. Next time I have a partner in here, I'll show you how this works together. So you can start in this position, you're standing behind your stick, point your thumb at the threat, that gets it in the back hand, from here, oh, that's my finger, from here to here, from this position, back hand, thrust, lift, step, strike. Put it back on the floor, you're behind your staff, you always want to fight behind your stick, and stick between you and the threat, point, thrust, don't break your mirror, lift, switch, strike. And so you can practice this over and over and over again and become very familiar with how your body moves in space and time. So one more time, this, this is your homework for the week. If you work out with me on the Zoom, maybe I'll ask you to show me if you can do this with your walking stick. If you only have the cane, that's all right. You can uh, do most of it with your cane if you lift it up. So you're going to point your thumb, thrust in the body, step over to the side, stepping, never crossing your feet. From here, then you're going to step left. Bring the right foot back as your hands switch and you strike in on the left side. And then you're going to reset to the middle so you're standing right behind it. Alita says, thanks for the efforts. Thank you, Alita. From here, point the thumb. Thrust. Add that side step so you're coming back at the angle. Your left foot's in front of the right. You're intercepting with this block and you're going to step right foot. As your left foot comes back to where your right foot was, you're replacing one foot to the other. Your hand slides by it and strike. Put it on the floor, step behind it, point the thumb, thrust, lift, switch, strike, step behind it, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. You can do it all in one breath or you can do it on two breaths or however you want. That's just different ways to practice it. When you start to add that breathing in, the last benefit, there are many benefits, but I, I talked about how it squeezes everything, making you strike faster. I talked about how when you exhale out, it forces it in so you get oxygen everywhere and the muscles are faster, more relaxed and squeeze harder. And then I talked about how that exhale can also be a mental trigger, telling yourself, okay, time to fight. And then the last thing is, when you do this breathing, you're going to oxygenate the blood. It's going to get into your blood cells and you're going to burn more calories in the same amount of time. So you're going to melt the fat. You're literally going to turn on your uh, fat burning, the thermogenesis. When you increase your deep breathing, you get breathing in with the striking. So you're going to hit a lot harder. You guys have been great. I will see you uh, probably tomorrow. I think we'll be doing another one tomorrow. And then on Wednesday and Thursday this week, I think it's both days, we have the Zoom class. I'm opening a new Zoom class um, on Wednesday and then a Zoom class on Thursday. So if you can't meet me on Wednesday, you can meet me on Thursday or come to both of them. Just send me an email if you want into that. There's a small fee. Um, and when you break it down, the actual cost per each class is really, really small. You do two in a week, it's even half that. But I'll see you guys in a little bit. My contact information is in the description below. Yeah, it's all in there. So you can reach out to me that way or go to the description of the channel. And I'll see you guys in the virtual dojo.